Well, hey guys, welcome to the channel. Glad you're here. Glad you're stopping by. Um, <laughs> so the Xbox uh, showcase just happened, and actually it was really, really good. Uh, unfortunately, we have to talk about Dreamcast Guy again because uh, he's got another hot take, and I figured we'd do like a reaction. We'll just watch the video. We'll talk about it. Uh, I already watched some of it, um, but first, let's talk about it really quick. So there's a lot of copium on the fanboy side, on especially on PlayStation side, where you see a lot of people like, like, oh, the Xbox has no games, and blah, 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 blah. Uh, we've had uh, one really bad showcase, and that was the PlayStation showcase, where uh, they concentrated mainly on live service games, um, especially the biggest thing they could actually talk about was uh, <laughs> Concord, which was the uh, Overwatch clone. Yeah, something we definitely needed was more uh, hero shooters, and guess what? Xbox had one too, and it was pretty shit too. Uh, so I'm not really looking forward to these live service games. But um, <laughs> let's go ahead and talk about something really quick before we get started. So on tw on X here, uh, he actually had a um, <laughs> got a post where he was talking about how the Xbox showcase was going to be a four out of ten. Uh, he got into a little bit of argument with Paris over at uh was it kind of funny games um and everything blew up everything blew up and i actually had a conversation with him here where we talked a little bit and if you see right here this post was deleted this this prediction of the four out of ten was deleted we actually had the conversation here where i was actually talking about him um you can see right here uh, he's actually deleted some of it like there was more than this comment here uh, he deleted the others, but he's, he deleted, he actually deleted his post there, which is really crazy. Now, if you take a look right here, he actually put out a new video where he reviews the Xbox showcase. If you notice right here, if we take a look here, cannot reply. You cannot reply. You cannot do anything except I'm, I'm assuming a select few people could do it, but he probably blocked me because uh, I've been shitting on him for a little bit. Um, but he uh, disabled comments on this, um, which, you know, for somebody is supposed to be genuinely neutral. That's pretty cowardice, I imagine. Um, but it's funny because you can actually go, like, right in here. Um, you, there is several, several cases where you see a lot of Sony fanboys freaking out because, you know, they said, oh, all these games are bad and all this shit and uh they're all coming multi-platform which that's good i'm actually cool with open platform games uh but to say that the xbox showcase was bad uh a vast majority of the internet would disagree with you uh because xbox had a lot of a lot of stuff to prove uh especially with the shakiness of the industry and that company in the last couple of years especially with the acquisitions of Bethesda, Activision, and so such forth, and the closing of Arcane and Tango Gameworks and several other studios. Um, it's been pretty rough. So Xbox had a lot of expectations to be because, well, let's just face it, it's been, it's been a shitty time for them, and this is where they had to prove that, hey, we got games, we're going somewhere, and a vast majority of these games, I'm going to say, they're probably a lot of them is multi-platform, except for their big main titles exclusives. So I know they was talking about Halo going to uh, <laughs> PlayStation, which that wasn't revealed, by the way. Nothing like that shown up. Um, one of the funny things that really blew, my, blew me away is whenever Destiny, the final shape, came out, uh, you've seen all these Sony fanboys comment on, oh, look at this, Sony never misses, which Sony really had nothing to do with uh, Bungie's Destiny 2. It's been a multi-platform game on every platform, except for I don't think it's on Switch. But it's been on every platform. Um, but they claim that's a win for Sony, which it's not. It's just, it's a win for gamers, not not just Sony. Um, but their big thing right now is like, there was nothing really shown at the showcase for PlayStation that was of any, any, any good. Nothing, I mean, there's some stuff. Well, don't get me wrong, there's some stuff. But mainly main, it's like live service bullshit. And I think that's funny because Dreamcast Guy actually talks about live service games in this latest video. So let's watch it. Let's watch this. I will hop on here. 
And we'll just kind of see how it goes. Gabe Rooster, Cast Guy here, and today we're talking about the Xbox Games Showcase because it has just concluded. I watched it and I have some thoughts, but to be honest... And immediately, immediately, and as soon as you hear that, he has some thoughts. This guy's mind was made up 10 years ago, okay? He was, his mind was made up 10 years ago. He was, well, he was on his meth pipe. <laughs> I better not say that. He was on his meth pipe. I'm going to say it anyways. Allegedly, um, he was ready for this to happen. So let's continue. To be honest, it was way way better than I actually expected. I mean, I feel like... Four out, four out of ten, by the way. Four out of ten. He'll go, he'll, he'll, he'll explain more here. My expectations were super low because PlayStation had a completely paltry state of play, and then... No, it, was, it wasn't just paltry. It was pretty, pretty damn bad. It was really bad. Um, really bad. And you'll be in denial to say otherwise. A lot of people saying it was pretty bad, so I mean... You know, but I also seen I also seen somebody said you can't compare the Xbox showcase to the state of play. You you're not allowed to do that. So they moved the goalposts like <laughs> they just moved it. They're like, well, you can't compare it to that. And I, uh, that, was, that was always funny. We had Summer Games Fest, which was incredibly boring. Whereas Xbox is and again, Summer Game Fest was not like it, it was good. It was good. Okay, it, if it deserved anything. It deserved a 7 out of 10. Uh, if I had to rate them, PlayStation would have had a 4 out of 10, which Dreamcast said the Xbox would have had 4 out of 10. Uh, Summer Game Fest had a 7, and I want to say Xbox had at least a 9. At least a 9. And again, I do play a lot of Xbox games, but I also play everything. I have all the systems. I don't really have uh, any preference. I play games on all platforms. Uh, I do love me some Xbox, though. I do love me some Xbox, I'm not going to lie. Showcase, it felt like E3. It had new games, it had crazy stuff, it had reveals, it had stuff we knew, it had stuff we didn't. And I want to just pick it apart piece by piece as a person that definitely is kind of bit Is definitely biased. Definitely 100% biased. And not genuine one fucking bit. Or he would not have disabled the comments or deleted his post. And regretting buying my Xbox, to be honest with you. Like, I purchased an Xbox Series X on day. I regret buying my Xbox, even though every PS5 game has come out, except for a couple, has either been ported to PC or is a remaster of a PlayStation 4 game. Um, but Xbox has no games, guys. Xbox is the same fucking boat. Most of their games are on PC. Most of them. Most of them. It's basically the same build. I don't really care what you fucking say. There are some outliers on the PlayStation, but most of the games are either on PC or they are on the PS4 as well. So, I mean, and especially the ones on the Switch, by the way. One's on the Switch, by the way. Day one, and it's been pretty much gathering dust. I just play on my PC or on my PS5, but now I'm finally starting to get it. Like, if the stuff they showed today is legit, if these games don't get canceled, if the studios don't get shut down, it does feel like the next two years of Xbox could hopefully be legit. But let's discuss. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could, please give this video a like and subscribe. No. No, I don't think I will, sir. I do not think I will. Subscribe if you haven't already. So we're going to go through this bit by bit, but we're not going to talk much about Call of Duty. They did. Why the fuck not? Why the fuck not? You're going to talk about Destiny, how that's big, and that's a big win for Sony. You're talking about Concord, which is also on PC, but let's not talk about Call of Duty. It's a multi-platform game that's coming straight to Game Pass day one. So let's not talk about that. Let's not talk about that. Let's just... Let's just not talk about it, okay? To talk a little bit about it towards the start, they showed a trailer. They're doing like a separate Xbox showcase dedicated to Call of Duty, but uh, as good as Black Ops 6 is certainly going to be, and it's going to generate billions of dollars of Microsoft cash, I, I'm just not super interested in like the details of Time to Kill and stuff. I want to go through the actual games they talked about, starting with, holy heck. He's definitely not not wrong about this next game. Doom, Doom, 
the Dark Ages looked incredible, by the way. That whole chainsaw shield thing, which you might, he might show it. It's actually, yeah, it's actually right here. I'm not going to show it in the gameplay because I know it will get demonetized. But, yeah, that, that fucking thing, that fucking thing was crazy. Heck, what an opener. Doom, the freaking id classic game is back, and it's taking place in the Middle Ages, or like the Dark Ages. So the game is called Doom the Dark Ages, and it has... It, originally, it was called, I think it was Year Zero. I think that was the leak, but Dark Ages kind of does fit the aesthetic on here. Was battling like dragons and demons and stuff, but in like castles with like weird homemade psychotech. This seems so perfect. Like, occasionally you see an idea that's so brilliant, you're like, how has nobody come up with this beforehand? Wowzers. Uh, I am definitely super on board with this. Uh, God, man. Hopefully they give us a demo of this uh, coming up at like QuakeCon or something. They actually did a surprise demo for Doom 2016 at QuakeCon a couple of years back. But next up, stated at K3, this is one of the games. There were a lot of trailers in here. Some stuff that I liked, some stuff that I didn't like. Uh, by the way, yeah, Doom is coming out hypothetically next year. There were a lot of trailers that were. You, you see, you see, he's already got like negativity, like right out the fucking gate, right out the fucking gate. He's got negativity. Every fucking thing that was shown, currently, he has something negative to fucking say about it. But this guy's genuine, right? He's a genuine neutral party. My specific cup of tea, but I did appreciate the games that did still show combat and gameplay, like Steady to K three. Personally, I despised State of K2. Like, he despised Skate, State of the K2. <laughs> I admit, it was a broken mess when it came out. Uh, State of the K is definitely, um, definitely kind of janky at most of the times. So it's not my favorite zombie shooter. And it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I played the shit out of the first one, played a little bit of the second one. Um, but. What they shown here, and a lot of it was CG, but the stuff they shown with the gameplay does look like they refined uh, at least the combat a little bit. Maybe they're doing some kind of more of an emotional story elements to it because, you know, you play the first State of Decay. I never got really attached to the characters since, you know, they die and you have to find new characters and all that stuff. But maybe they're doing something with this. And yeah, they could have done it with State of Decay 2. I don't know. I never finished it. Um, I was just, at that time, I just wasn't playing it. But this trailer actually looked pretty good. It looked actually refined compared to the last couple of games. The early version of that, I heard it eventually got patched and fixed, but I tried to play State of K2 for the first month it was out, and it was a completely broken, literally unplayable mess. State of K3, they showed gameplay, they showed combat, they showed some pretty good, well, what the game is going to be. I am so burned on CGI trailers, even though we're about to get to a bunch of CGI trailers. At least this one, you understand how it's going to play. This is a very slow, methodical survival game. Some of the stuff, though, it was still pretty CG heavy, like Dragon Age The Veil Guard. This is the next Dragon Age game. What the heck was it called before? It was called, like, some... I've never actually, like, got into Dragon Age. Uh, I, I, I always wanted to, but I never really got into them. Um, it's like, it's hard for me to play like, uh, 70 hour games. I have played so many, like, I feel like I'm like at this point where I'm old enough where 10 to 15 hours is just the right for me. But, um, you know, Velgard looked okay. I did. I expected this to be shown. There was actually rumors of this being shown, but you know, it does look okay. Uh, I, there was no gameplay, but that is what it is something Don Wolf or something like that. So now we have the... But if this will show on the PlayStation Showcase, this dude would be nut in his pants right now. Official name of it. It definitely looks good. Um, I'm curious to see how this shapes up. It sounds like pretty much everybody that made Dragon Age into the franchise we enjoy has left the company long ago. So let's see what the current age of Bioware actually comes up with. Like, the fact that it has specific classes and characters, I mean, we'll see how that one turns out, but the CGI trailer didn't really do anything for me. Like, a lot of the stuff, like, this graphics and stuff, even if it looks great, I don't know, man. Oh, God. Okay, so... So he goes on a big tangent here about uh, Flight Simulator. 
how this is DLC. This is a new game, new flight simulator. It's not a season. It's, I don't think it's an expansion pack. It's just a new season, basically like your yearly Call of Duties. This is another fucking game. And he's going to go on about how a bunch of expansions were showing up. A lot of people like expansions to their games, but he is going to gripe and how that's a bad fucking thing when people are getting more of what they wanted from the games that they love. Uh, but this guy, this guy. Now, like I said, if, you know, they release The Last of Us Part 2 where you played Abby and she's jerking off uh, another Abby and he would absolutely love this shit. He would absolutely, absolutely love this shit. Forearms and all. Everything is going to be pretty positive after this, but I have to get my biggest gripe out of the way. Oh my God. Microsoft is definitely trying to do a bunch of games as a service. Microsoft is obsessed with... Dude, dude, the whole Sony showcase was fucking live service games for the most part. Sony's actual goal, which was made, I think it was last year, was to focus on live service games. Live service games. Now, that's the whole fucking industry. That's not a Microsoft problem. This is the whole fucking industry. And this guy right here thinks it's just an Xbox thing. When what we have on PlayStation, the biggest... The biggest thing that came out of the showcase was Concord, which is a live service shooter, a live service hero shooter. With obviously trying to make Xbox Game Pass into Netflix, and they want to drop seasons of games the way they would drop seasons of shows. They had a ridiculous amount of DLC. Hey, we have a new flight simulator. Hey, there's a, a bunch of stuff coming to Starfield. Okay, well. Starfield is a big expansion. I'll probably play that. It's called Shattered Space, but 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 Destiny Two just came out from the expansion, and that's so fucking great, so good. It's an expansion, an expansion, so goddamn good. Some of these updates, chat. When this came on, I was watching this live. Uh, the people that were reacting to this, like in the Xbox chat, were completely losing their minds. I still really did not enjoy just Star. Just like everyone else. I mean, Starfield was not perfect by any means. I like Bethesda games. I liked Skyrim. I liked Oblivion. I liked Fallout. I loved all those games. Um, Starfield was it was just okay for me. It actually needs some growing. It ha needs some growing, right? It needs to be new stuff added to it, like vehicles, uh, more, more missions, more uh, exploration on the planets and stuff like that. It was by far not a bad game at all. Not at all. Uh, I would give him maybe a 7.5 out of 10. But right now, like, I finally finished Starfield uh, just last week. Like, I took a break from it. And I just finished Starfield. And, you know, that's that's just me. That's just me. That's just me. Field in general, it just felt like a busted, downgraded version of just what I loved about Skyrim. But I, I am going to play that with an open mind. And I hope that Shattered Space, you know, with that extra year of polish and updates, actually plays better than the base game. Graphically, visually, it does look incredibly good. Like this art style, man, you can harp on Bethesda for having kind of repetitive moments in their games. But that art is truly top. He does. He is right on that. That does look really good. It does look really good. The expansion does look great notch but god all these things oh here's another season of sea come on playstation Yay. playstation oh here's another season warcraft. of world of warcraft now i was really addicted to world of warcraft for about seven years so what i was personally hoping is i thought they were going to announce that world of warcraft is getting added to game pass i'm not playing world of warcraft right now because to be honest i'm trying to stop paying for so many of these subscription services it sucks that there's like eight billion different fees you got to pay to watch stuff or play stuff so if they end up putting world of warcraft into game pass i'll probably give it another shot but oh god a fallout 76 expansion uh, he's so fucking tore up that there's expansions coming for games that people actually like to play so fucking tore up. And like like I said, if this was a PlayStation thing, and there was expansions to like God of War, uh, Last of Us, Spider-Man, whatever the fuck it is that's on a PlayStation, this dude will be nutting to the ceiling. I know I am not the target demographic, but I'm saying as a viewer, the fact that they showed a huge bunch of stuff about, oh man, here's the latest update for Fallout 76. Here's the latest update for this game. Here's the latest update for Elder Scrolls Online and stuff. 
none of that stuff really piques my interests except for Diablo 4. I actually have 700 hours played on freaking Diablo 4. And I'll bro needs to touch grass. You need to you need to touch grass. Like I don't know how you could put 700 hours into a video game. Like, I play video games my entire life, and I've never put that much time in a single video game. Like, at all. At all. Post that. Like, I'm trying to edit this video quick so it blows up in views. Be sure to like and subscribe. But I definitely want to do a video when this comes out, and I want to show the fact that I have 700 hours played in Diablo 4, because, man, does this game just get more and more fun. They did say that this is going to get a new class, a new area, but they didn't show it. They just showed a pre-rendered cutscene, and in my opinion, which looked phenomenal, by the way. And this, again, this isn't this is multi-platform, but it is on Game Pass. Uh, I own Diablo 4. I haven't played it yet, though. But um, Blizzard does a really good job with their cinematics, and that was really good. Like, I don't have anything to complain about. Like, we know what Diablo plays like. We've seen Diablo 4 play. So it's just going to be an expansion of more of that, maybe showing off the next class. But uh, as far as a way to hype up people for the next expansion, that's a good way of doing it. That that trailer was really good. They couldn't even really like hint as to what we were going to be doing or anything about it. Like, I wanted a bigger reveal than that. Like, as a person with a literal freaking tattoo of Diablo Four, a person who's read all the Diablo books and stuff. I wanted more than just this vague, spooky cutscene. I wanted actual details, or even personally, obviously I'm a fanatic here, I wish they'd shown even 25 seconds of gameplay and said, hey, here's the new class. It's paladins, or it's witch doctors, or it's something. But, okay, complaints aside, I am still happy that now Diablo 4 does have a release date. Next up, Expedition 33. This looked super weird, but like... I think this game way. looked really cool. Um, I know that a lot of times there's just so much stuff coming out. It's sometimes difficult to like get that necessary attention. Like there's just so many games coming out so quick. I know that a lot of studios and developers and stuff are like struggling to even get you to look at it. This is the kind of stuff that I am glad is at the Xbox showcase because apparently there is a creature called the painter that paints a big number and everybody who is above that number, like here it's 34, everybody that is 35 and up dies. And so everybody is trying to do an expedition to kill her before the whole population of the planet gets wiped out. Uh, that's wild. I think they showed some gameplay of it, by the way, and it was a turn-based combat game. It's like a JRPG. It's like classic Final Fantasy, which instantly becomes ten times cooler than me. I anyway, thought that game looked really sweet. A tiny thing, which is that there was some leaks hinting to the idea that we might actually see something like the Final Fantasy IX remake at this. That did not show up, but... I'm not going to knock it against it. Uh, obviously, you can't get mad about what didn't show up because I don't think it was Xbox ever claimed it was going to. But uh, like you said, like I don't think anybody ever said that Xbox was going to show off Final Fantasy IX remake. I never heard anybody say that. I don't know why anybody expected that. I would figure that if that thing is going to be announced, it probably would be announced on PlayStation. That's just me because when I see Final Fantasy, I automatically assume it's a PlayStation game. I could be I could be wrong. I was still hoping it would show up. I think that would have taken it. I think that this was like, well, I won't give you my full score yet. I'll give you a score at the end. But if this had had some bigger game like Prepare your uh, anus. something that really shocked the audience, I think that would have put it up to like a nine for me personally. Okay, next up, South of Midnight. Now, this is a project done by Compulsion Games. It's the people that Okay. Okay, I do want to talk about this game for a moment. Um, so, I actually think this game looks cool. It's got a really cool art style and the animation. It's kind of weird. It reminds me a little bit of uh, the um, Spider-Verse movies, the Amazing Spider- what, what are those? Welcome to the Spider-Verse. The Spider-Verse movies. Uh, the animation was kind of janky, like the frames skipped on it. This actually kind of looks really cool. Like, combat-wise, gameplay, maybe. Maybe it'll be a good game. The only thing I didn't care about is how the community manager, I think, was basically going on a spill about um, not hiring uh, white people in her studio, which is fucking racist, by the way. Um, racism works both ways. Um, but this is one of those cases where 
the studio um, PR person or whatever said, you know, this is authentic black, and that's fine. That's fine. We need more representation of black creators. That's great. That's great. But don't say, hey, don't play our game if you're not white, and stop, stop fucking, stop that shit, please. Did we happy few? And I think what was that game called? Contrast. They've done a bunch of very artsy games. This is purposefully ultra low frame rates. The characters seem like they're moving at like 12 or 15 FPS, whereas the game itself is running at like 30 FPS. So it creates this like interesting stop motion look. It's very purposeful, but man, did I think it looked awful. Uh, it's one of those games where I know that people are going to enjoy it and I'm going to play it and I hope it's good, but that animation style, oh man, I don't like slow, choppy animation. Spider-Man, by the way, Spider-Man had DLC, a skin from the Spider-Verse that did the same sh shit. It did the same thing, same fucking thing. I never heard him complain about that, but he's complaining about it here. So, I mean, there's uh, any reason to believe that there's an Xbox tax, it's this guy right here. Uh, I get problems with motion sickness sometimes, not very often, but sometimes, for whatever reason, if something has choppy frame rate, that really messes with my brain. So I do hope this looks a bit smoother in the final version. But right now, I will say, this looked a lot better than I kind of hoped. The initial teaser trailer of it didn't really sell me on it. But now that I know that it's like a big swamp adventure mythology thing, it definitely has my attention more than it did. Next up, Metal Gear. This was a surprise on the stage. We finally got to see Metal Gear in actual full action. And they actually went off and they basically did a one-to-one -one recreation of the game. Which, that's what they should do. Just create the game, make it the same game, just some, change the game. Like, give it some gameplay, modern gameplay touch-ups. And just give it a little bit of really nice graphics. And that's it. And I think that showing up on the Xbox stage was pretty surprising. Um, I don't think this is coming to Game Pass. I don't think it's shown that, but um, that was really cool. Very unexpected for that. Solid Delta. So this is a full remake of Metal Gear Solid 3. Oh my gosh. Uh, certain stuff, I feel like they made the characters look a little bit different, but God, I like Metal Gear Solid. I've beaten every Metal Gear Solid, but man, this remake looks 10 out of 10 perfect uh konami makes mistakes i know that there is a chance this will end up being a complete dud but i don't, this I don't trailer think it will. was insano i loved this trailer and it had so much combat it had so much gameplay it had like just him blowing everybody up everybody knows that freaking metal gear solid 3 is a masterpiece but wow Wow, wow. Now, this is one of those times where some Xbox showcases, they end everything with, like, coming to Game Pass. They didn't do that for no, this didn't. one. They uh, didn't. A lot of the stuff is coming to Game Pass. This one, obviously, is a normal, full-priced game. They're, uh, the licensing Ooh, my deal God. to put this on Game Pass my would goodness. be tens of millions of dollars, probably. Uh, some games they showed today it just looked terrible. There was, like, a whole section of this. The game looked, like, was forsaken. boring. A lot of these games, like, hey, we're Flitlock the Siege. It's a game where you, like, kill gods. Yay. Age of Mythology. I do not freaking care. Uh, Perfect Dark. So, when this got revealed, like, when this trailer started... Did, did this, fu did did this fucker, like, did he complain about Forsaken? I want to know. I want to know. I really want to know. A new IP, he's, he's like, yeah, that fucking sucks, man. That sucks. It's not on PlayStation. If it was on PlayStation... I'd be sucking this dick right now. Chat extremely happy about it. I, I, there were some details that kind of slipped out. I like the perfect game dark. Having an extremely gameplay they show. It actually looked really good. The people that are trying to make it are just having difficulty completely nailing like the tone, the pacing, the speed. You know, making it fun. But now that we've had a chance to see not just cutscene, but a lot of what seems to be gameplay. Like sometimes these gameplay things are fake. You know, it's kind of held up by shoestrings, but. It seems pretty real, and it seems pretty fun. Like, I'm hesitant fun. to fully say this looks fantastic because of all the leaks and stuff, but if we put that out of our minds, this does seem like classic Perk Fit Dark. Like, it seems like a classic cool shooter with tons of spy and espionage and crazy gadgets and stuff. If, if this ends up being as good as these trailers make it out to be, I think Perfect Dark is going to be a very 
very he's big not wrong w for Xbox. he's not wrong here next up fable so this trailer seems to convey and i could be wrong here it seems to convey that this chick is the main character that i not- i think there's going to be i like in fable regular i think if you're going to take out the character customization where you be male or female or whatever um i don't think they're going to do that they are going to concentrate probably on this uh this female character because you know it's a, a strong independent woman um that's kind of big right now and i think that's a good way to be like hey um our female gamers uh xbox this would be good you can have a uh a character that represents you and there you go F- fable was always like that you could always choose a boy and a girl or a man or woman whatever and i think that's no different here it's just just how they did with like mass effect trailers back in the day where they had fem shepherd um same thing here i th- i could be wrong though i could be really wrong not be a custom character this is the playable character so this i think is this going to be the first fable game where you can't make a hero now that's just the way it's conveyed by this trailer which showed her so much and we haven't ever seen any other character except for her so i don't know but i still think this game has a bit of an art style thing that doesn't quite work for me but I, I this is one of those games that I'm ready to be wrong about. If Fable you are, you probably are completely wrong. Completely rocks. I will be extremely happy to take the L. But a lot of these early teases, they just seem so hyper focused on being funny instead of being a game. You know, like I, I want to see some combat. I want to see like f- a full minute of uninterrupted hacking and slashing and magic. But when it comes to color, when it comes to presentation, yeah, it sure looks like Fable. Okay, next up. Indiana Jones. That game looked fucking circle. sweet. So, this is a game I have not liked some of the glances at it. This is being done by Machine Games, the people that have done the Wolfenstein games, which I completely freaking loved. So, my my fact, question is is what did he not like about it? I know there's a lot of discourse where like it's going to be woke garbage or whatever. I don't really care about that. It actually nails like the presentation of what an Indiana Jones movie should be. That's just me. Like watching this trailer actually looks good. I wish they would have shown more gameplay, but um, giving us a little bit of insight of what the game is going to be in terms of atmosphere and just overall tone, it kind of nails it. Nails it, especially uh, Troy Baker. I think Troy ba- Baker is voicing uh, Indy on this, so. That they specifically are working on Indiana Jones. Oh, I know why. Because it's not fucking Nathan Drake. That's exactly why he doesn't like this game. I am open-minded to it, but they still didn't show much gameplay. They just showed this really long cutscene, which did look funny. It was animated well and voice acted well, but like the reason I love Machine Games is because you get to murder Nazis. You get well, to- we've seen that in like the first few trailers, and especially at the end. Like We've seen gameplay for this game. We know what it's going to be like. We've seen it. Yes, it would have been cool to see more gameplay, but they had a whole two and a half hours or whatever to do this thing. And they were showing everything they could. And they did show gameplay of this game during the thing. It was just showing us you know, what to expect. Is this going to feel like an authentic Indiana Jones film or video game? And I think it nails it. I think it nails it. To rip them apart and hack them up with axes and gouge their eyes out and murder tons of Nazis. And clearly, we're going to get to do that in this. We get to murder all these filthy Nazis. That's cool to me. I wish they'd shown more of that. Maybe it's because they're trying to sell this to the Indiana Jones crowd. They're trying to show They are. They really are. We made a game for the existing Indiana Jones audience. I guess... as a person who isn't an Indiana Jones fan, like I've seen all the movies once and I went, okay, which I know is a rarity. I want to see how it plays more we've than I want to see, like basically reenacting the silliness of Indiana Jones. We've seen how it plays. Oh yeah. Avowed exists. This is still coming out 2024. We don't have an exact release date. That game's I still sweet. think that, that uh, Avowed looks absolutely fantastic. I think yeah, I can't wait for that. It has such a Skyrim vibe to it. Uh, the more Obsidian it, hits more than they miss. Skyrim, the more it kind of looks like your uh, standard fantasy game. But I'm ready to really be blown away by that. I do love Obsidian a lot. There is some stuff I'm skipping in here just because there is some stuff that personally 
I really don't care about Elder Scrolls Online. I really don't care much about Life is Strange. This is one of those games that I know does have a very, very hardcore fan base. These are the original characters from the first Life is Strange, I believe, right? Like, these people, double exposure. Uh, so the character Max is able to rewind time. Now she can go to parallel universes. That's actually a pretty... I've never played these games. I've never played them. I always heard there's a pretty good cult following for them. I've never actually tried them. Um, always hear good things. And I'm, I'm kind of glad that more people get to go into that universe. Um, personally, like I said, it's not for me, but I know there's people that are actually excited for this. So, a good idea for a game. But some of the stuff in here, like Mecha Break, I just... That was showed on... Was that show? That was shown on Summer Game Fest, I believe. And I think... Was it shown on PlayStation? I th maybe. I could be wrong. Did not care about that. There was a big chunk of this that... I mean, for me personally, just... That Wuchang, Wuchang, whatever, that actually looked pretty good. It reminded me of Tenshu, by the way. I don't know why he's not talking about this. Did not grab my attention, did not impress me, did not wow me. But these last two games absolutely blew me away. Freaking Stalker, Stalker looked two, great. Heart of Chernobyl looked... I believe that will be multi-platform, too, by the way. I, I, I'm not for sure, but I know it's going to be on Game Pass day one. Uh, but I think that is multi-platform. So good. Um, I do not have much experience with Stalker. I haven't played the first one, like, hardly at all. I've heard it has an incredibly diehard fan base. So the fact that they're bringing it back, I've heard it is the most gritty, hardcore, realistic simulation survival ever, where you have to actually have, like, air filtration and eat food and properly not get infections. I mean, I'm not sure how much of that's legit. I've just heard different stuff like that, especially with the mod scene. People make all sorts of, like, hyper-realistic mods. But man, does this look oh, those absolutely look incredible. insano. And this is coming to Xbox Game Pass. You got to give them credit for that. But the closeout. Yeah, this, 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 this solidified, this solidified the Xbox show. This solidified. Everybody was wondering, we're going to get Gears of War 6. That's what's going We're going to get a Marcus Phoenix collection, which was absolutely a fucking crime that they did not announce that. But we have a Gears of War prequel when we're going to step in the shoes of both Marcus and Dom in their younger days during E-Day, which pretty fucking awesome. This, I, literally my jaw was on the floor. If you actually go to my channel and search the word Gears of War, I have reviewed, I've beaten, I've played every single Gears of War game. I'm obsessed with Gears of War. I even read, there are some Gears of War books. There's some Gears of War comics. I would not recommend them. They're kind of cheesy, but not very well done. They're doing what seems like oh, great. a remake of Gears of War 1. No, they're what not. That's 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 not fucking, it's not a remake. It's, it's a prequel. In the timeline of the early Gears of War games. That's a young Marcus Phoenix. That's Dom back from the dead. And it says, Gears of War E-Day. Now, they even showed a flash of a newspaper that said the war is over. So I think this takes place right after the emulsion wars have ended. And so it's like showing up right at the beginning of when the locusts arrive. This was a really good showcase. I mean, it's one of those things where it, it wasn't perfect. It definitely had some slow moments. But if you getting. compare it to the other showcases we had recently, Xbox killed it. They absolutely set well, expectations Well, let's give it a score. Right and followed through perfectly. Uh, wow. I I beforehand, I thought this was going to be like a 4 out of 10. It was at least an 8. I would give this a solid 7.5 or 8. This was a good, 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 good showcase. But what do you guys think about it? Uh, tell me your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. Okay, so we, that's enough of that. That's enough of that. That was pretty pretty wild, uh, just just to see him have some copium there. Uh, it was a good part. It was really good. It was really good. It was a really good show. Uh, I, myself, gave it a 9, not a 10, not an 8, but a 9. Uh, but a lot of his stuff is pretty, like, um, hypocritical, to be honest with you. Uh, we kind of knew he had a negative... Uh, look on this going forward he said it was gonna be a four out of ten we know that he deleted his posts on uh x and <laughs> he actually disabled comments on x when he posted the video on there um but you know like i said this guy this guy is definitely not a genuine 
uh, gamer, like he says he is. He's definitely a pony. Um, there's a lot of copium in there. I hope he. I'm glad he uh, took the L there. Um, but other than that, other than that, like <laughs> I knew, I knew watching this video, I knew he was going to have something super negative to say about it. And like I said, if things were different, if this was on PlayStation, if they had that same kind of showcase, he would be like. <laughs> drowning in frothy ejaculate everywhere that's just how it would be that's exactly how it would be but guys thank you so much for watching i love you very much and keep just playing games i love you guys